scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you about the difference between mass moment of inertia and area moment of inertia. Now I get this question an awful lot. Um, in fact, I got an email the other day asking for exactly this, and I figured this was probably a pretty good topic for a video. So here we go. Now, let's say I'm a student. Believe it or not, I'm here. I used to be a student. I remember this. I'm sitting all happy enough, I guess, in my strength and materials class, and some propeller head like me is talking about area moments of inertia, okay? And we're talking about how beams bend. So here's a beam, state school, so there's my beam. Um, so real stiff this way, not real stiff if I push down on it that way, okay? That's, that's area moment of inertia. Not a whole lot of stiffness due to shape, a whole bunch of stiffness due to shape. Area moment of inertia. So, okay, I write that down in my notebook and I figure this out and I learn to calculate with it. And then I go to my dynamics class and some other propeller head is talking to me about a mass moment of inertia. Well, wait a minute. One of them was area moment of inertia and it was the letter I. Got it. The, the other one is mass moment of inertia and it's also the letter I. Well, I mean, I know there's 26 letters in the alphabet. You're going to have to recycle a few of them eventually. But this can't be an accident. There's got to be something here. And there is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how mathematicians describe what we engineers call moment of inertia. All right? So here's how this works. Now, when you, you're in engineering, if you are talking about a moment, OK, you wouldn't mean a moment in time usually. Usually we mean something that might be, you might call a torque, something that makes something rotate or at least want to rotate. All right? So if I grab this beam and do this with it, okay, now the moment I'm applying to it is pretty small because the beam doesn't weigh very much, but I am having to apply a torque to it to get it to do this to accelerate. All right? that's, that's a moment. So in, in the engineering physical sense, mechanical sense, that's typically what we mean by a moment. But that's not how mathematicians think about it, or at least not how they used to think about it. The mathematical definition of a moment, all right, and they mean this in a, in a fairly abstract way. They mean um, looking at the effect of numbers at a distance kind of thing. It's, it's a very, uh, uh, like I say, abstract way to do this. And the way they write it down is frankly terrifying. But don't worry about it. It's not that bad. I'll walk you through it. All righty. Okay, so if you're a mathematician, there's a moment. Now, I'm an engineer. Um, I'm okay at math, but I'm not great at it. My son, the mathematician, is much better at it than I am. And I look at that and go, the force times the distance is a moment? What's that? Well, kind of. If I've got some function and I'm multiplying it by uh, basically a distance raised to a power, stick with me here, and then I integrate it over time, that's a moment. That's what mathematicians think of as a moment. Well, I don't know what that is. Okay, hang on a second. Let's try this. Let's try an a, a mean, which is an average. Okay, if I have a list of numbers and I want to figure out the average of the list, here's what it looks like. Okay, x bar. Okay, that's a little abstract, but what it says, this is the mathematical recipe for saying add all the numbers up from, from 1 to n, n being the biggest number, the, 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 the length of your list. Okay, add them all up and divide it by the number of numbers you've got. So if I add up all the numbers between 1 to 10, okay, and I divide them by 10, okay, I'm going to get an average. And I just talked myself into a corner because I don't remember what that is. Um, figure it out and I'll, I'll figure it out later and we'll, we'll, we'll see if we agree. Okay, that's the definition for a mean. Now we all know how to do this. This is pretty straightforward stuff. We learned this in maybe grade school. Well, this and this are almost the same thing, okay? If we have numbers instead of a function, this integral is terrifying minus infinity to plus infinity. It's actually not that bad, but um, becomes a summation. Summation becomes an integral only when something is continuous. Well, this is a list of numbers. It's not continuous. Um, well, let's see. C is the center. Well, if C was 0, 
Okay, well, I'd be adding up a list of, no of just li of numbers, and if n was 1, that's pretty much this, okay? And f of x is just 1 in this case, all right? So this and this really are the same thing. Now, because n is 1, this thing, a mathematician would call this thing right there, a first moment. Okay, fine. Sounds good to me. Um, where else do we see this? What if I was trying to find the centroid of a shape? Well, okay, let's try this again. I'm just going to draw a picture of it this time. There's x and there's y or f of x, depending on how you decide to write it. It's a very bad x. Okay. And who knows what this looks like, okay? I, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a mountain range or something. Maybe it's a plate of metal. And we want to find x bar. We want to find the, the balance point here. If, we, if I were to stick a, uh, a, a bar under it, uh, to cut this out of a plate, stick a bar under it to make it balance, where would I have to put it to make it balance? That's the centroid. Well, let's see. If I know what this is, Well, let's see, x bar, and I don't know where the balance point is, I'll just sketch one in here. Well, let's see, if I want to, I need to know uh, where the distance from uh, some starting point, I need to know where the coordinate system is, so that's c right there, where's the, where the coordinate system starts. In this case, I'll just start it at zero. So I'll say c equals zero, and I'll say integral, and I'll go from zero to x final, whatever that is. Zero, x final, and I want to find the moment about this, so I'll say x times f of x, oh, and dx, put that in there. That's the recipe for a centroid, isn't it? That's the area, very end of the curve, okay, and that is first moment of area, okay? So, we already know about this stuff. This, in spite of the fact that it's written in a very abstract form, okay, but that's what mathematicians do. They go to increasing levels of abstraction to find unity among different ideas. And it's really good that they do this. It's right that they do this. So don't be upset or worried if you see something written down this way, okay? Um, but there's your first moment. All right, well, if there's a first moment, is there a second moment? You bet. Let's try this. If n was 1, okay, that was first moment. If n is 2, second moment. Well, where have we seen second moment of area? Well, let's see here. If you look at an Euler beam, by the way, if you're into German, that's pronounced Euler. Like, uh, Leonhard Euler's friends, well, they probably called him Leo, but um, when he was at the beer, the, the beer hall drinking, he was Herr Euler. He wasn't Herr Euler. That's what, as an American, I want to pronounce that Euler, but it's actually pronounced Euler. So if you hear that, that's why. Um, an Euler beam, which is the, the, the beam mathematically described first by Leonhard Euler, um, Let's see, Let, let's, can we assume it's a constant cross-section beam? And um, I'm going to do this. It makes it a little easier. Oops, it's four, not two. Okay, that's the expression for the deformation of an Euler beam. This is the, the, the uh, structure that's approximated by a beam and first described by Leonhard Euler. You don't actually see Euler beams stamped on them. It's just this is the mathematical description. Okay, EI, and this, by the way, this is the only time I've ever seen a fourth derivative in anything physical. Okay, and there probably are others, but as an engineer, this may be the only time you ever see it. Pretty important application, though. Um, and there's shear right there, shear as you go down the beam. So this, that's stiffness due to material. Okay, 
so that means the stiffness of a steel beam is a lot higher than a beam made out of wood or silly putty or something. And this due to shape. And what by shape I mean cross-sectional shape. Okay, it actually uh, is a function of length too, but for, this is a cross-sectional term. Well, if I want to know what this is, okay, and I got to do this, and they say dA, and this turns out to be, uh, let's see, y squared, okay? If you are trying to find stiffness of a beam with that cross section, that's the integral for I. Now wait a minute. That's a distance squared times an area. That's, that's our function. Okay. Um, that's a second moment of area. That's second moment of area right there. Okay. So that's the, the mathematician's description of a moment in this case applied to an area. All right, I can do that. Um, well, it worked with an area. Would it work with a mass? Sure. Okay. So let's do this. Now, I tried this the other day in one of the other videos. It actually worked pretty well. Um, I've got a, because of the richness of the life I lead, I have a tire in my office. This is a little tire off a racing go-kart. Um, lent to me graciously by one of my students. Um, I have to give it back. All right, so if I want to rotate this tire, okay, like this, it takes hardly any moment to do this. This tire weighs, I don't know, maybe a kilogram, two pounds, um, not very much. Okay, it takes very, very little moment. Now I say a uh, moment in the engineering sense, torque, how about that, to rotate this. If I push this out there, now all of a sudden I need a lot more than I had. Okay, well plus my arms weigh a lot, but um, to do this I need a lot more torque than I needed before and that's because of mass moment of inertia. Okay, so mass moment of inertia, the place you see that is some of the moments. Now again, moment in the engineering sense, force times the distance equals I omega. This is the rotational equivalent of Newton's law. All right, and that is resistance to rotational acceleration. Also, moment of inertia, but now a mass moment of inertia. So let's say I've got now a, maybe a tire, okay, and I've got the axis there. Okay, that's gonna, we're going to accelerate in that direction. If I take this tire and I divide it up into lots and lots and lots of little boxes, okay, and we go all the way around here, it's in radial coordinates, um, the, com the contribution of one of those little boxes to I is R, or I'm sorry, is, is the mass of that little box times the radius squared. So, now we get okay, and we have to integrate over an area, so it's a double integral. Distance squared times some function. Hmm. That is also a second moment, but now it's a second moment of mass. Okay. Okay, that's a second moment of mass. Well, mathematically, it doesn't look any different than the second moment of area, just that now we've got, uh, we're looking at mass instead of area, but mathematically it's the same thing. To a mathematician, these are the same thing. There is no difference to them. 
Okay? So the good news is if you think about it in terms of, of math, the way that mathematicians think about it, they're the same thing. Now the downside is they don't physically mean the same thing, and that's why we don't have mathematicians designing bridges and engines and stuff. But um, that's okay. We're all in this together, and we all help each other out. So the big idea here is that's the area moment of inertia versus mass moment of inertia. So the, the big idea here is there, there's this thing called mathematical moment. And there's first moment, second moment, third moment. If you look at statistics, standard deviations and kurtosis are defined in terms of mathematical moments. It just so happens that the expression for mathematical moment is very useful mechanically when we're looking at area moments of inertia and mass moments of inertia. We mathematician would call that the second moment of area and the second moment of mass. So there you go. There's my try at explaining the difference between math moment of inertia and area moment of inertia. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.